Welcome to Doing Time with Joe. I'm your host, Joe Baker. Back again with another episode, y'all. In this episode, I'm going to be talking about finding my freedom. This is not a physical freedom. Don't get it twisted. I want my physical freedom yesterday. <laughs> uh, but in time, that'll happen. In the meantime, I want to talk about that freedom that I gave away and I also want to thank you for what all of you have given me. I'm not sure if you're even aware of what you do for me by listening to the show, but you have given me something back that I gave away uh, for nothing. I gave away my voice, I gave away my freedom when I committed the crimes that I committed to be here. Uh, I wasn't aware of the fullness of what the criminal lifestyle, the criminal mindset would cost me. And I don't think most people are, but I have come to a place in my life mentally and spiritually that um, it allows me to see beyond those things uh, that most people see. Uh, a lot of people, when you talk to them about getting out of prison and what they want to do with their lives, uh, and, and, and don't get me wrong, I think that a lot of the stuff that they say is great. They want to spend time with their families. Uh, they want to eat some fried chicken and mashed potatoes and, and uh, go to sporting events and concerts and do all of those types of things. And, and uh, I want to do some of those things as well. But more than anything, uh, what I want back uh, in its fullness is my voice. I didn't realize how much I would miss that. Cause I didn't even realize that I had a voice, if that makes any sense. Uh, and we all do. We all do. But when you don't realize, when you're not in this place of awareness to realize that you are uh, significant, that you matter, uh, you'll take that for granted. And I miss my family. Uh, I miss being there when somebody gets married, the happy occasions, graduations, and I also miss being there, you know, under the, in the sad occasions. But man, I miss, I'm not gonna rate it or put one above the other, I guess. I don't think that would be right to do. But now that I know that my voice matters, I really miss it. I think about all the years that um, I wasted living this lifestyle that is selfish and painful to so many people, so many communities. I wasted all of that time thinking that I was making my situation better but I was making it worse. And all the people around me, I was making their situations worse too. And I wanna thank you uh, for listening to what I have to say. I wanna thank you for agreeing with some of the things that I say, and I wanna thank you for disagreeing with some of the things that I say. Uh, it's exciting to know that Somebody out there, uh, don't get me wrong, my family, I know my family cares about me, my girlfriend, all of that, I know that. Uh, but it's exciting to know that people that didn't know me this time last year or two years ago have come to know me, to know something about me and appreciate me. And I think that if we found a way together to help people 
that are out there in the streets, help people that are in our families understand that you matter and your voice is going to change the world one day. That we might be able to move that needle forward in stopping a lot of this nonsense. The people that I talk to in here on a daily basis, they tell me all the time, I wish I could do what you do. And I tell them that you can. And I'll stand there or I'll sit there with them for hours, not explaining the details of what I do, but encouraging them to find their own lane. And you can see, I see the hope in their eyes. And it's almost like a light switch. As quick as I see the hope in their eyes, I see the dimness come back. It's like they're trying to figure out what, how, who, what, where do I fit in? And, and it's like this, this, this darkness that this lifestyle creates, it's almost where it, it, it becomes too much for some people. And they can't find that, they can't find their footing. So what I say to all of you out there that might be uh, involved in some things that you shouldn't be involved in or being asked to do some things that you shouldn't do, what I would say to you is that you mean more to the world, to your family than whatever it is that you're doing is providing for you. You mean more to them than that. And if you have anybody, no matter of fact, I'm not gonna even say it like that. For those of you that are trying to get other people to engage in those things, you also mean more to the world and to your family than what you're engaging in. They would rather see you struggling, trying to do the right thing, than not struggling or appearing to not struggle doing the wrong thing. Real talk. It's easy, man, to get up and rob somebody, sell drugs, shoot somebody. It's easy, man, to get angry. It's easy to get angry. It takes some work, man, to be patient, kind, giving, forgiving, loving. It takes work to do that because those acts are intentional acts. You have to think about those things. You have to ponder those things because anything that matters requires effort, work, meaningful effort. You can put in effort to sell drugs or to rob somebody or to kill somebody, but it's not meaningful effort. It's crippling, debilitating effort that goes into that negative stuff because it's doing the opposite of what you were intended to do. It's doing the opposite of what you were intended to do. And I get so frustrated sometimes when I talk to the guys in here and I gotta practice my patience with them because they make these arguments and it sounds like they could give this speech in front of the UN uh, when they argue about what they believe when it comes to the wrong thing. It's like, I mean, you really believe that if you had that same effort, that same desire for the right thing, you could be president of the United States. But something tipped them over. What was that? What tipped them over? What tipped them over? And when I talk to the guys in here, it's, they'll tell you that it's lack of opportunities. They'll tell you that it's poor education, they'll tell you that it was bad home life, they'll tell you all of these things, and all of these things are true. 
They are true. But I'm gonna tell you what it comes down to. Even with all of that, it comes down to choice. It comes down to choice. If you are old enough to drive, and listen to what I'm getting ready to tell you now. If you're old enough to drive, old enough to work, you are in a position to change your surroundings. Well, I guess you would say, well, I ain't got no money. I ain't got this. Well, you ain't got no money where yet. So you might as well go somewhere else and not have some money, but be in a better position, create a better opportunity. Because what I've come to believe and understand is we create our reality through the choices that we make. What do I mean by that? It all comes down to choice. And I know this is going to sound uppity, but I don't mean it to be uppity. I've come to understand that if I can create a company, a podcast show, with the help of my family, the people that love me, while I am in prison, then my environment, my environment only has the influence over me that I allow it to have. I am making a conscious choice, an intentional decision daily not to get involved in selling drugs, not to get involved in smuggling contraband in prison, not to get involved in participating and using the contraband that's already here, not to do any of those things. I am making a choice to do that. No matter how difficult it gets for me sometimes, why? Why is that so important to me? And why should, that be, why should that be important to you? Because those choices that we make puts us in line for the type of opportunities that are going to come. And then attached to those opportunities are going to be the things that happen to you and for you. If you choose to sell drugs, if you choose to do something that's causing harm to somebody else, your opportunities are going to be limited to that space. And that space is a narrow space. What comes from that is the grave, hospital, and jail. That's it. Let's keep it 100. But if you make the choice to do something that is productive, that is fruitful, that is profitable for you and those around you, your family, your community, society at large, the opportunities that are available to you, that are open up to you, are wide and fruitful and many. But you got to believe that. You got to believe that and you got to take it by the horns and say, this is what I'm going to do. Yeah, it may be difficult, but you know why it's difficult? Because you haven't done it before. Because you haven't done it before. But when you do it, when you learn to ride a bike, it's difficult. You're stumbling, you're falling, you're crashing. But when you get it under control, when you do it, then you learn to do it without even putting your hands on the handlebars. Now it's easy. It just requires the effort. And that's what frustrates me when I talk to my brothers in here. I try to get them to understand that anything that's worthwhile is going to require effort. And it's going to require a little bit more effort than is required when you're breaking the rules. Because the mental fluctuations that you're going to experience are going to be many because it's going to, you're going to be going against all of those things that the environment that we're in says that you should do. People are going to be trying to influence you to do this and that and that and this 
and it's going to feel uncomfortable. You're going to, be, you're going to feel weird. I feel weird every day when I'm around some of the people that I'm around because what they do, what they say to me, they try to make me feel as though I'm wrong. But I've come to understand that I'm not wrong. So whether they support me or not, I love them. I love them because I know who they are. And the only way, the only reason I know who they are is because I know who I am. And I want them to taste this. I want them to experience what I'm feeling. You know, me and my son, we were talking the other week about what I'm talking to you about now. And I'm so proud of him because he was in here with me. My son was in here with me, both of my sons actually. But my youngest son was in here with me and he's, he writes books. And he's selling books now at the Yin Yang. Go check him out at jtb3.org. That's his website. And my book's on there too. Check it out. Uh, and you'll see it all on there. You know, The Making of a Murderer. His book's on there, The Life of Boo Baker. Got to put that plug in there, you know what I mean? I'm a businessman now, y'all. You might be able to call me all these other things in relation to being in prison, but when you get to the end of that, you know what I'm saying, that description of me at podcaster, author, entrepreneur to that list. You know what I mean? But, and that, for my son as well. But we were talking the other day, and my son said to me, he's like, Daddy, it's all about choice. I said, you know that's right. It is about choice. But people choose what they know. Remember that. People choose what they know. And if what you know is not fruitful, not profitable, not helpful to you, your family, your community, and society at large, don't choose it. And if you're in an environment where that seems to be the only choices you have, change the environment, man. And I know it's hard. I'm not sitting here talking like I'm stupid. I understand you might not have the money. Well then save it up. Save it up. Stop making excuses for not doing better. Because ain't nobody coming on no white horse, man. They not coming. They set up an infrastructure. You have to find a way to navigate that infrastructure, man. You have to. But saying all of the things that we say as far as the opportunities that they need to make for us and the system needs to do this and do that, don't get me wrong, I'm not letting the system off the hook. If you've been listening to my shows, you know I don't let the system off the hook. But you cannot continue to wait to make the change in your life that you need to make to, so you won't end up in a place like this or influence your kids or your nieces and nephews to follow your lead and end up in a place like this. You need to make those changes now and they're gonna be difficult. Because like I said, when you first start to learn to ride a bike, it's difficult. But when you learn to ride that bike, you can set up straight on that seat and paddle it and move down that road without even touching the handlebars. I know how it go, I used to ride a bike too. And that's how life is. It's about learning to ride a bike. You're gonna crash, you're gonna be afraid because you're on these two wheels and now you gotta learn how to balance. You gotta learn how to balance it. And then when you get to rolling, you roll it. But you gotta give yourself a chance. You gotta put in the work. You gotta be intentional about it. And when I think about all of the people when I have those rare opportunities to see uh, what my page looks like or I'm talking to somebody at home and I say, what's my numbers or what is this, what is that? Go look at my analytics and they tell me, you didn't know what, uh, you, <laughs> you hear me saying analytics, y'all, hey, a lot of people when I say analytics in here, they look at me like, what is he talking about? Yeah, I know what I'm talking about now. I'm in the groove of things. But when I tell 
whoever I'm talking to, whether it be my girlfriend or my family, I say, uh, what do my analytics look like? What do my numbers look like? And they tell me, I just smile. Because I'm sitting here saying to myself, wow, this is validation for me. For years, I sought validation from the wrong people, the wrong circumstances. Now, it's all about y'all. I consider you to be my family, all of y'all that are listening. And I want to do the right thing. I want you to be pleased with me. I want you to be uh, excited every time you get a notification. And click on them notifications, whatever that means. I, I was told notifications is like when an episode becomes available, you get notified and you can listen. So if you don't have your notifications on, click that on so that when these episodes go up, you, you will be the first to know and you can listen. But when I learn about you know, how many people are listening to my episodes and, and how many people are subscribed to the podcast, I am speechless every time. If they tell me Monday that it's 2,205, and then the next day they tell me it's 2,210, oh, those five people, look here. It might not sound like a lot to y'all, the people out there that have access to it and are able to do this and that, but having those people add to our family and listen to what I'm saying and offer me positive feedback and critical feedback. I don't want to say negative, but the critical feedback say, Joe, your episode's a little too low. Turn the volume up. Joe, uh, you might need to talk about this. Or, Joe, keep up the good work. Well, most people call me Big Joe. I like all of that. So keep coming because for me, this is about making it better. Because the goal for me, y'all, as I've said many times, is to deter people from this lifestyle by telling them the truth about it. By telling them the truth about this. Because this lifestyle is not it. You cannot make it make sense. I don't care who you are. Not this lifestyle. You can't. You can't. So with that, like I said, I want to thank all of you out there for listening, for giving me back, giving me the gift that I gave away so freely through causing so much pain to my victims and their families. Thank you for giving me that back. I value and I appreciate every single one of you, whether you agree or disagree <laughs> with what I'm saying sometimes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This has been another episode of Doing Time with Joe. I'm your host, Joe Baker, and I say peace, y'all.